This is the iZip E3 Sumo. It's a fat, dry, fat tire electric bike with a, an awesome mid-drive system here for a really great price. This thing's only $36.50, uh, whereas a lot of the other mid-drive fat electric bikes are upwards of five, or even, even $6,000 and you get a really good value here. You get a lot of great components, including hydraulic disc brakes. I've got uh, 160 millimeter in the rear, 180 millimeter up front, and they use the Tektro Dorado levers, which, which are actually really fluid, really easy to, to you know, to actuate. You know, it's, it's nice when you're off-road and you're, you're trying to navigate some bumps and stuff to be able to just gently squeeze those and, and not just activate the brake, but also have that, that motor inhibitor because this does have pedal assist. There are four levels. And in my experience, this thing just, it puts out a ton of power. It's a 350 watt uh, center drive system right here, kind of tucked away at the bottom of the, uh, bottom of the frame. And you can see there's sort of an elongated drive spindle there in, in order to make room for the ultra wide tires on this. So what we're looking at here is Juggernaut Sport 26 by four inch and these have an amazing range. I think it's like 5 to 30 psi and right now we're kind of at the upper range because I've been riding around on on hard terrain and roads and stuff. This is actually a speed pedelec so in addition to being you know good for sand or snow if you if you're at those lower psi's it can go really fast if you if you raise it up like we're at now and take it out on the road you can get up to about 28 miles per hour with rigorous pedaling it's got a really advanced drive system that's listening to your wheel speed that sensor over there and just the standard magnet as well as um, a cadence sensor so how fast you're you're turning those cranks and also how hard you're pushing those cranks that's um, torque sensing okay so it's it's really advanced I mean it doesn't seem like it has shift detection I've changed gears a couple times there's a 10 speed cassette back here SRAM X7 and you know there was a little bit of mashing going on uh, I would be I'd be pedaling and shifting through and it's kunk, 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 you know the, the motor didn't seem to ease off the way Bosch or impulse system would but this is still much more advanced than some of the other systems that um, it, it gives you a throttle mode it's a little bit basic uh, only up to about six miles per hour if you're not pedaling and then if you if you start to pedal and kind of put some input then it'll it'll let you go up to 20 with the throttle mode it's a little bit you know it's kind of like you know it really it really goes this thing is pretty powerful um because you know the motor is 350 watts but we're looking at a 48 volt volt battery 8.7 amp hours so significant energy that's 417 watt hours total um and you feel it, you know, when you're out there on the trail. And that's, and that's excellent because this bike is a little bit, uh, it's just a little bit bigger. You know, there's more friction happening with these, these big tires. You potentially riding through terrain that's softer, that's, you know, kind of um, sloshing through the snow or maybe sand and having that extra, you know, the voltage on that motor, you notice it. And I haven't struggled with this. Actually, I was coming up a little incline over there and the wheel was was more like spinning so it was it was never giving me difficulty that way the battery pack is removable so it can be charged on or off the bike there's the charging port right there um, it weighs about 6.1 pounds you know so not too bad if you really felt like you needed a second one for better range it this is supposed to go up to you know it's like 25 35 miles and I, it's really dependent on how much energy you put in to pedaling of course and being more of a torque sensing system you know you it is possible to you know have the bike respond more fluidly when when you're pedaling it's it's not just kind of an on-off system unless you're in the higher pedal assist and then it and then it definitely feels it's kind of you know zippy feeling um so you know we were talking about the disc brakes before and everything but i, I didn't want to skip over the wheel set it's double walled really nice it's got these cutouts you can see the squares there and that that really helps to reduce the weight of the wheel and keep this bike at that 52 pound mark but it also adds a little bit of cushion because you know the the tires themselves they're they're flexible but this is harder rubber whereas the tube it's softer and so you know you can you can feel that like push on that so you can imagine going over terrain and um you know as as compression happens on this tire these have a little bit more give than than the actual tire itself so that's cool quick release on the front and the rear that's really handy because this is so big it's really easy to get this into your car um, something like that take both wheels off and getting the real rear wheel on isn't very difficult because 
all of the electronics and stuff are right there in the middle of the frame. You don't have a whole bunch of extra cables coming back here. It's just a standard bike, which also makes it easier to service and stuff. Flat tires or getting this tuned up by a shop, the derailleur straightened out, that kind of thing. And, you know, there's really a wide range of, of speeds here. 10 speed, that's not bad. I have seen, I think, like 11 speeds on maybe like the felt uh, outfitter uh, or the, the Lebowski, but that's those are much more expensive bikes. And you know that one extra gear. I th I still feel like this is a good a good setup. And of course, whatever gear you're in is going to empower the motor. If you're climbing, you're in a lower gear. It's going to make it easier on the motor. If you're trying to go fast and hit that 28 mile per hour mark, which by the way, none of the other fat bikes I've reviewed are capable of that. Well, then you go down to uh, you go to a higher gear and you can hit those speeds. So I feel like they've they've delivered something here that's that's pretty awesome for a great price point got a nice slap guard there on the rear chain stay i noticed that i didn't see any you know bosses on the back for adding a rack or uh, putting on fenders but you know given that it's a fat bike there, there is a hole there on the front on the fork and there's one underneath right there but you know there's there's nothing back here so if you were going to do a rack you might have to do like a beam rack coming off of the seat post there and yeah the seat post um, this it is about 31.6 by 350 millimeters for the seat post there and I love that that sort of the bash guard you can see there's a guide on both sides of that front chain ring but if you come into contact with like a rock or something it's going to keep those teeth a little bit a little bit safer and the front sprocket is a 38 tooth and then on the back you've got 11 to 36 tooth I like that they went with these you know sturdy Welgo metal pedals they've got you know, little nubs on them. They're a little bit, they're kind of like narrower and maybe that helps the bike. You know, this is a fat bike, right? And that, that spindle's already wide. So maybe having the narrower pedals helps it to, just to fit easier when you're, when you're riding it. And they worked all right for me. Um, the bike does come in two sizes. We're looking at the 17 inch medium, uh, but they also have a large that's about 19 inches and i suppose the weight would vary a little bit but you know i'm still impressed at 52 pounds not too bad all the wires run through the frame so it's really clean and kind of see back here you know you take that take that battery off that 6.1 pounds and you could hang this off the back of your car like a on a car rack or something um it's really neat that that they've uh, got the the high step but it's a little bit low cut here so it's easier to stand over decent looking saddle and maybe this is a good chance to you know check out check out the drive system in action so one of my complaints about some of the iZip bikes that are using the trans x drive system right now is that the battery pack has to be physically turned on before the display unit can be turned on so a lot of times you're just up here you're trying to press the power button nothing happens on these bikes you actually have to you know press this for a couple seconds and you get kind of a little battery indicator lighting up there we go so you can kind of see the red orange green 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 we're with a full battery right now so now that that's on we'll press the power button and the display comes to life there there we go it does a little quick countdown it starts off in speed we've got miles per hour set up right now but you can actually change the display a little bit so there's this like box icon and when i press that we'll go over to the odometer and then distance and range range is cool because it sort of calculates on the fly how far it thinks you can go given the pedal assist level you've chosen so i'm in two right now if i arrow down to one well there you go 31 miles and again they estimate like up to 35 so it kind of depends there is a level zero and it took me a while to find it, but see I'm arrowing down, one seems to be the lowest level, but what if you don't want assist? What if you just want this to be a cycle computer or something? Well, what you do is you hold the power button for a couple seconds and then let go and then boom, now we're in zero. The throttle doesn't work, You know, no pedal assist is gonna happen. You're basically just, again, cycle computer right here. And I'm gonna try to shade this a little bit. If you hold the plus button for a couple seconds, that actually turns on the backlighting and it's got kind of like a daylight sensor as well. So that's just to override it. Go ahead and turn that off. And then of course, one, two, three, four. So the fourth level, the highest level of pedal assist where you can get 28 miles per hour, it's only estimating 15 miles for that. So, you know, again, the range is highly dependent on um, how much motor power you're using and 
um, yeah, as it, as it should be, I suppose. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hop on this thing. I'll do the throttle. One of the things I've noticed is that it gets you up to six miles per hour, actually you end up going like eight or 10, but then it cuts out really abruptly and then just stays off until you coast below that six mile per hour mark again. I feel like it could be a little bit smoother and you know, I've often complained like, why don't they just make it go to 20? Well, it does go to 20, you just have to be pedaling, okay? So it's, it's a little quirky um, in my opinion. I'm gonna go ahead and get back down to level one hop on this thing here is the throttle mode there we go so it just cut out and I should have been on speed there we go so 8.6 8.0 7.7 so you can see you know the speed was clearly above six miles per hour and now that we're back to about that speed I can tap it again and it boosts me and then it cuts out. So, you know, interesting, just keep that in mind. I think it was designed to help you, you know, boost over a hill momentarily and then, you know, get you to go back to pedal assist mode because that's where you're gonna get the best range. And, you know, this is meant to perform like a bike. I do love that, that you know, the Transex system has smoothed out a lot since I first tried it a couple years ago. Um, it just, it feels more gentle, it's smoother. It's relatively quiet too, you can hear it humming, but um, in level one, like here, watch, watch this. See, I'm not, I'm, I'm at like, you know, nine, 10 miles per hour. It's not overpowering in terms of speed or in terms of, you know, jolting me around. So I, I really like that, I feel like they've, they've kind of fine-tuned it. But then of course, if I get up to level four pedal assist, you really start to feel it. <laughs> it definitely gets you going. So that's pretty cool. You know, they've done a, they've done a good job on this thing. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do another little quick speed thing for you and try to get some better footage. A little bit of a climb in front of us here. Again, I haven't had any problem with this thing. It, it definitely gets me going. I'm only, you know, 135 pounds though, so keep that in mind. I just think the mid drive's really solid. Here we go. I can kind of switch gears. There we go. It's awesome to be going this fast on a, a fat tire bike like this. Ah. Uh, and just, you know, keep in mind that your tire pressure is really gonna change the way this thing rides and, and give you that, that, you know, the ability to handle the soft terrain and, and really grip to, and, and go through like, there's a river bed back there with big rocks and stuff and draining it down, you can kind of like, it, it just, it smooths it out. It's a cool feeling, it's a neat technology. And, and by the way, here's the charger. You know, it's relatively small and it only weighs about 1.8 pounds with weighing it earlier. There's no fans. Doesn't seem like there's a lot of moving parts in it, and you know, for a 48 volt volt charger, that's pretty solid. You know, pretty easy to take along and top off the battery. The first half of the battery is a lot faster than the last half because you know it doesn't have to balance all the cells and stuff as much. So, wanted to make sure I showed that.
some air out of the tires here. Go down to that creek bed. Again, for well under 4,000 bucks, this is it's a solid offering. So, you know, that's the iZip Sumo for the full ride up on this and other iZip bikes. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com.